one, he just hasn't made it yet. But death is coming. The grave is calling. And death in the grave doesn't care if you're black, if you're white, if you're male, if you're female, or you don't know what you are. The death doesn't care. It doesn't care if you're a newborn or if you're old. He doesn't care if you're ancient history. Death will come ringing your doorbell one day and say, Come on, we got a trip. But if you have the tickets of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ will say, Hey, yes, you got to die. Take that trip, but you come with me. Absent from the body and present with the Lord. But without Christ, and he died, and they buried him, and in hell he lifted up his eyes. That's the story of the afterlife. That is the story. And there is no condemnation or damnation of believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, for only Jesus saves. There is no name given amongst men whereby they must be saved. Acts 4.12 Listen, I'm quoting and reading to you from the Bible. This is not the words of man. This is the words of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but men wrote the Bible. Yeah, man is the pen and the Holy Spirit is the ink. And that ink is red. You know the words of Christ in red? The blood. You know what the ache of religion is? Hot air. There is no condemnation according to John chapter 3 that all believe the Lord Jesus Christ. But he that believeth not is condemned already. If you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, you are living in damnation. You are condemned by God to go to hell. By not believing on Jesus Christ. John chapter 3, verses 18. You got my Bible, page 1151. 1, Left hand column, halfway down. In red. The Bible says condemnation comes because you have not believed. Salvation comes because you have believed. And that offering of salvation is to you today, right now. You can call upon God to be saved. Right now, you can step up, and we got a Bible. We will show you what the Bible says that ye must do to be saved. And it's not what religion tells you. I'm not asking you to open up your wallet. I'm not asking you to open up your purse. I'm asking you to turn and repent and to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not even asking you to go to church. Believe it or not, right now, according to the Bible, folks, you are in church. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There are three Christians right here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here right now. You are an assembly listening to a preacher. You are in church on a Saturday morning. And it's not a funeral, it's not a wedding. It's salvation. And yet, it can be a funeral if you choose not to believe. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. That is why men die today and go to hell. Because you have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have not believed on that holy name of Jesus, who is God.
God, and God is Jesus. Because there are a bunch of Mexicans out there with the name Jesus. But that's not the Jesus of the Bible. Even Paul warns us that there are other Jesuses. There are other Gospels. There, are, there is another Spirit. Yet there is one Jesus, only begotten of God, sent by God, because He loves you. And God's not going to call you an infidel because you have not believed. That's a religion. I tell you what God will call you if you do not believe, and He's reaching out to you. I tell you what He's going to call you. He's going to call you sinner. And He's not going to take your life. He will give you life. That's the difference between Christianity and religion. We're not going to tell you to worship one man on this planet who sits in ivory palaces and takes all your money. No, we're going to tell you to worship one man who is God and God is Jesus. That gave His life, that shed His blood upon Calvary. We're here to tell you to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. John chapter 3. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world. Jesus Christ, according to John chapter 1, is the light. What is the light? To show you who you are and what you are. He say, what am I? You're a sinner. For all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. All have sinned. There is none righteous. No, not one. You are an unrighteous sinner. That's who you are. And you know who God's looking for? Unrighteous sinners who are willing to repent and trust in Jesus Christ as their Savior. Do you fit that bill? Let's forget about the big sins. Let's look at the little sins that makes you a sinner. Lying and stealing are a sin. Washington, D.C. doesn't believe that, but they're full of sinners. You become a sinner when you tell your boss you're sick and can't come in and you go to the beach or the ball game or go fishing. Changing the numbers on the 1040 makes you a liar, and that makes you a sinner. That pen you took from the bank makes you a thief. That makes you a sinner. If they got to put a chain on the pen because of you, you are a thief. A thief is a sinner. For all have sinned, and Christ came to save sinners. The wages of sin is death. That is why you're going to die, because you are a sinner. And if you tell me I don't sin, and if I live long enough to see your grave marker, I will walk up to your grave marker and say, You are a liar. The wages of sin is death. They bury sinners in the graveyard. They buried Jesus in the tomb, but the graveyard couldn't keep him because he wasn't a sinner. It spit, it spit him right out after three days. Yet, yeah, but he deposited our sins into hell that we may have life. The reason why they buried Jesus, the reason why he died, is because of all of us who are sinners, I include myself. If I was righteous, and I'm not, and if I was sinless, and I'm not, 
Christ would never have to come and die upon Calvary's cross. Everything would have been fine. But because man took a fruit that God told him not to take and take a bite out of it, we are sinners. And sinners die. What you do with your sin constitute where your eternity will be spent. If you think you can pay the price, your payment will be in hell. If you think religion can take care of it, your payment will be hell. But if Christ can wash away all your sins, and your hope is on the finished work of the gospel of Jesus Christ, then your payment will be with glory with the one who died for you for all eternity. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. You know what God just said right there about you people? People who reject Jesus Christ? You're no better than a cockroach. Cockroach mingers around your kitchen all night in the darkness, picking up scraps of food, getting something to drink, find a lady cockroach. As soon as you turn that light on, they fling away. As soon as I put the light of the gospel upon you, you fling away. You don't want it. You want to eat, drink, and be merry just like the cockroach, but you don't want the truth. You don't want the light. And Jesus Christ is the light. John chapter 1. Religion is no light. Man has no light outside of Jesus. now. That is God speaking to Isaiah, speaking to you. Come now is an invitation. And let us reason together, you and God, and the Bible. It's not you and God in science. It's not you in public education. It's not you and your music and God. It's not you and God in what you think. It's you and God in the Bible. Come now, let us reason together. Saith the Lord. I'm speaking to you through God, through His Word. God is not speaking to me orally. He doesn't give me dreams or anything like that. He gave me His Word. I'm reading to you out of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. So does God speak to you? Yes, through the Word only. Honk if you love Jesus. Thank you. Though your sins be as scarlet. See, it's a sin condition. Are you breathing? Then you're a sinner. I don't care how well you breathe. I don't care how well you don't breathe. If you're a living, breathing human being... 
you are a sinner and it's the same condition. One day that breath will stop. And the heart will go into a flat line. Have you ever met with God and reasoned with Him about the Lord Jesus Christ and your sins? While you were breathing. They shall be white as snow. The only way to clean your sins, to be washed, is in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, a lamb without spot. It has to be the lamb of God. It can't be any other lamb. It can't be any other lamb. It has to be the Lord Jesus Christ. For whence cometh wars and fightings amongst you? Come they not hence, even of the lust of the war of your members? Ye lust, ye have not, ye kill, and desire to have, and cannot obtain. Ye fight in war, yet ye have not, because you ask not. You have not asked the Lord Jesus Christ to save you. That's why you got war and conflict going on in your life. Your sins are competing with other sins. And your distress and your troubles are rest upon you do not have hope. You do not have joy. Because that can't come by anything but God. The Bible says God is love, so if you don't know God, you don't know love. But the fruit of the Spirit, that's the Holy Spirit. And the only way to get the Holy Spirit is by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is love. You can't have love without God, and you can't have love without the Holy Spirit. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit does not happen unless you ask Jesus Christ to save you. That's exactly right. So, without Jesus Christ, you can't say, I love you, you are a liar. A liar is a sinner. Because you don't know what love is. You are of your father, the devil. Who's a liar and a murderer, the Bible says in John 8, 44. If you are not a born-again, Bible-believing Christian, you can't say, I love you, and know what you're talking about. Joy. Joy is the fruit of the Spirit. I stand over here, I look at this baseball stadium. Yay! He hit a ball! Yippee! All right! For what? The game gets over, you go home, and you live your live miserable job, and your miserable life, and your miserable family, and your miserable this, and miserable that, until the next stupid ball game. But the joy of God is everlasting. You can't say, I got joy, when you don't know the Holy Spirit and God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy is temporal in the world, and it will usually cost something. But the joy of the Holy Spirit is free. Now, it said the fruit of the Spirit. Which one of these bulls can you buy love or joy? If you could buy love at one of those booths, it's illegal and the cops will arrest you. But the love of God is free and pure and clean. Joy, peace. Is there really a word peace today in 2015? 
Yet the Holy Spirit can give you peace and turmoil. History shows that the Bible believes in Christians being tormented, being in tortures, being forced to death, being burned alive, and yet having peace to the end. Do you have the pure, undefiled peace that comes by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving the Holy Spirit upon your belief? Long-suffering. God is long-suffering to you that are not believing on the Lord Jesus Christ. Gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against, all, against such there is no law. There is a peaceful, joyful, free fruit of God by belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Or there is condemnation according to John chapter 3 for those that do not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus records to us that in hell there is torment, tormenting, and torment. And yet to the believer, there is love, there is joy, and there is peace, and there is light. There is the Word. There is the one that created you. There is eternal life. There is no perishing. There is sinless perfection. There is a new body. There is no pain. There are tears being wiped away. There is to be forever with the one that loved you. There is to be forever the one that gave for you. It is the only one that shed his blood upon Calvary. You can have the pure love, joy, peace of God, or you can have the damnation, the condemnation, the torment of rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. And you thought I was going to say hell. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Someone asked him, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, I go to church. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I give money. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. I'm a good person. There is none good. No, not one. Got you. But to that I say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Well, there is no death. There is no afterlife. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're angry. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's all it is to be. Finding out what Jesus has done for you upon Calvary's cross and believing on the finished work of Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. That's simple.